What's the best way to put your Venus flytraps in dormancy? Let's find out. Okay, so this is going to be kind of a modified technique. If you've ever seen my bonsai winter shelters video. Um, so I've tested this out for a number of years on other plants and now I just sort of modified it for my Venus flytraps. So we're basically going to be creating a miniature greenhouse inside of this garage. It's an unheated garage. So first step down here is we have a plastic lid and some towel on it which will provide insulation from the floor level because this is pretty much just going to be sitting on cement or even if it was on a table, uh, it's still kind of nice just to have some insulation so that the heat is not escaping through the bottom. So here's the star of the show. It is a clear Tupperware, or not Tupperware, it's a storage container. I got so used to using Tupperwares for other things. It's a Sterilite container. So very important here to use a clear container and a clear lid because that's going to allow us to provide light, either artificial light or sunlight through this container because these plants are still going to be photosynthesizing very slowly until they are completely dormant. Okay, so we have the clear container, we have the insulation on the bottom. The, the next star of the show, probably the most important thing in this whole contraption, is the reptile heating cable. As you can see, I have that snaked around the bottom, held in place with electrical tape, and basically that's going to heat up and prevent the plants from freezing. So you may be wondering, well, isn't that going to get way too hot during dormancy? Aren't your plants going to be tempted to grow? But, since I've been using this reptile heating cable for many years, and I'll probably include a link to it down in the channel, not the channel, the video description, I know that it will heat up, but in cold weather, like when it gets down to, you know, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 30, 20, 10, maybe we have some below zero temperatures, in this uh, weather, that heating cable will keep it just above freezing, so your plants are still cold, they're still dormant, but they will never be encased in a solid block of ice. So that's very important. So we have the heating cable down below. Next step, we're going to provide some uh, insulation on top of that. So I'm just going to get some old towels that I have. You can use new towels if you want to buy some and use them purely for your Venus flytrap and Saracenia purposes. And we're going to put that down in the bottom and that's kind of going to prevent the plants from touching that heating cable directly. This is also going to trap some air around it, so it's going to keep that warm air around the plants longer instead of just radiating it directly upwards. So, we have the insulation layer on the bottom. Next step, what we're going to do is grab one of those plastic plant growing trays. So here we go. We're just going to toss that in the bottom. Now this is kind of a proof of concept kind of video. You can, of course, use any size container that you want. You can get two or three or four of these, depending on how large your collection is. And... You can optimize the amount of trays, so of course, like, this doesn't fit in that way, I have to do it this way. Um, it's not the final tray that I'm going to be using because I have more plants, but just for the video. To demonstrate the purpose of putting a plastic tray down here, uh, because sometimes you may still want to water your plants during the winter time, and you don't really want the water running down onto the heating cable. So we have the plastic tray. Next, what do we do? Well, I'm going to grab my plants, pop them down into that tray. Now I'm just using two, of course, for demonstration purposes. Now, next step, if it gets severely cold in your area and you've had problems with them freezing solid before and you don't want them encased in ice and you feel like, uh, maybe this isn't quite enough protection, what you can do is get some bubble wrap, packing peanuts, more towels, any kind of insulation, and you can wrap your pots very fancy individually in this bubble wrap, but for just proof of the idea, or 
demonstrating the idea. We're just going to take this, pop it down in here so we can pretend that we have our plants now bubble wrapped. And what you can also do is you can take bubble wrap and bubble wrap this whole outside of the container. So then you have even more insulation and airspace uh, around the outside. So we've bubble wrapped our stuff. What's the next step? Well, we're going to take our lid, pop down the lid. That's going to trap the heat inside of this container and help it remain above freezing. So that essentially is enough for dormancy, but I'm going to add one more thing onto this container. And that is some grow lights. So we actually have one here. Bought two of these. These are just very cheap $15 LED grow lights from the hardware store. Uh, they will be good enough. So now comes the part where I kind of want to discuss how to use this container. Because we don't really need to turn on the heating cable until around late November and December. Now it's uh, only the middle of October here, so even if I put these in this container, I will be turning the lights on because it's dark in the garage. Um, on warmer days, I may still put them back out on the patio, but we can run the lights now in October where they're still not fully dormant and November, so they get that extra boost of photosynthesis. I may even run these lights during December because although they are dormant and not photosynthesizing very much, there should still be some small level of baseline photosynthesis. I feel like as long as there's some green foliage still on plants, they still photosynthesize to some extent. So, I mean, they're LEDs, they shouldn't really take that much power to run, so we will be running those on the container just for the fun of it to give us the option of uh, you know extending the growing season also when it's gonna start heating up in March and April but there's still some days where it might snow I can get a head start on the growing season by running these grow lights but still keeping everything in the garage where it's protected from the elements and protected from sudden frosts the next important thing is that I'm not going to be plugging in this heating cable until I absolutely need to. So, even though it's in the garage, inside of this plastic container, it has the lights running, it's still going to be kind of chilly in the 50s and 40s. Then, once we start getting nights, getting down to 30 degrees Fahrenheit or below 30 degrees Fahrenheit, I'll take this, I will plug it in, and I will run the heating cable inside of this container so that in that colder weather, the plants aren't freezing. So you can also get fancy, you can put the lights on a timer so you don't have to turn them on manually every morning and evening. You can also put this heating cable onto, well that wasn't the right plug, but whatever. You can take the heating cable and put it onto a thermometer, which will, or actually a thermostat, which will measure the heat inside of the container and you can, you know, regulate Oh, I want it to turn on at 30 degrees, but turn off at 50 degrees, so you can maintain the range that you want. So, essentially, we've created a miniature greenhouse for our Venus flytrap, so that they will have a very safe dormancy. Once again, that's the best method I figured out, you know, in northern Illinois, short of building an actual greenhouse in my yard. So... Good luck with your plants. If you have any questions, you can discuss them down in the comments section below. But um, if it's anything that says this method is completely stupid and idiotic, I will definitely argue with you because, in my opinion, it is the most logical method I could think of for safe plant growing. Venus flytraps don't need to be any colder than 30 degrees Fahrenheit, and if they are, they will die. They will get frozen solid, and that just kind of ruins the whole rhizome. The refrigerator method, it's kind of tedious, kind of, I don't know, can grow mold. Not the best in my opinion. I can't leave them outside because it's super cold in the wintertime in Chicago. 
Uh, I don't want to grow them inside my house all year because then they sort of turn into tropical plants and start having health issues. And I don't have a greenhouse yet, but in a greenhouse they would be in the same climate anyways, sunlight year-round and heated above freezing. So it's essentially a mini greenhouse. All right, so yeah, like I said, any questions, comments, leave them down below. Good luck with your Venus fly traps, and make sure to hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when I make some more videos on Venus fly traps. I was going to do that feeding video with the feeding method I have, but all the plants are dormant now since we've had our first few frosts. So, I'll be making those videos later. Hit the subscribe button to find out when I do it.